Hi, my name is John Paul Raj and my mission in life is to make the learning of math fun. So if you're new to this channel, please do consider subscribing. On this video, we are going to talk about how we can use widgets in calculus. So let's get started. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to use the CAS version of the TI Inspire CX2. So without any further delay, let's just go and add a notes page. Command M is going to insert the math box and there let's insert a function, a nice cubic function as our example. Uh, so define X uh, to the power of three minus something like three times X square is going to be a function. And when we hit enter, it's going to say done. That means F of X is now uh, stored uh, into the memory of the uh, of the calculator. One of the very common questions in calculus is to find the coordinates of the stationary point. Let's use that as an example for you know using uh, widgets in calculus. All right. So what we're going to do is that um, let's uh, go to menu calculations and algebra, and we're saying we're going to find the zeros because what we're doing is we're finding the zeros of uh, dy by dx. You know to find the stationary point, the x coordinate of the stationary point is actually to solve dy by dx is equal to zero. So what we're going to do is that use the template d by dx. And since f of x is already assigned, I'm going to say f of x. All right, and now we've got to be careful with these brackets, all right? So comma x is always a template in uh, uh, the TI Inspire. Now hit enter, and that will give me the x coordinates. Okay, these are the x coordinates. There are two values for the uh, stationary, uh, x coordinates of the stationary point of this function. And to try and verify that, why don't we go and add uh, a graph page also and since we have already assigned f there so I can just hit f of x and that should give me uh, the graph of the function and so we can see that x is equal to zero is a stationary point here we go that's uh, x equals zero and that's two points something and that should be that uh, second stationary point so that's confirmed and we're going to make a widget out of it so that uh, when you run the widget, when you add the widget, any function that you defined, uh, it should give you the coordinates. And this is just the X coordinates. Uh, so to find the Y coordinates, what we're going to do is that we're going to say F of uh, these values, right? So I'm just going to copy this part, all right? Let's just copy this part. Okay, so copy and bring it in here and just say that. And that's using it really smartly, isn't it? So this, these are the Y coordinates. So when X is zero, Y is zero, those are the coordinates of the first stationary point. And x is equal to 2, y is equal to negative 4. As you can see, even from the graph, negative 4, that's going to be the coordinates of the second stationary point. And now if you want to make it a, make it look a little pretty, what we can do is that uh, we can say uh, something like x coordinate of stationary point is, and then we can have the formula there. And likewise, we can just say uh, y coordinate of the stationary point is, all right? And so in the same way, you can write your widget to show other features of the function, okay? This was just the stationary points, coordinates of the stationary points. Let's say you wanted to write the y-intercept, okay? So let's put make it nice y-intercept this way. And the text has to be written outside of the math box, just remember that. So the math box comes in and we'll say that that's when, uh, uh, that's the value of f when x is equal to zero. And there you go, that's the y-intercept. And in the same way, if you want to write the x-intercept, uh, insert the math box. And again, you want to find the zeros of the function this time, all right? So calculations, uh, algebra, zeros of, let's say, f of x and comma x. And there you go. That should give you the x-coordinates of the x-intercept, okay? So as you can see, 0 and 3, you can verify the graph. And if you needed any other features, you can build your widget just according to that. And if you want to make it look pretty, you know, so wherever there are calculations that you know, uh, need not be visible. You can hide that. Let the let this function be there, and you can right click, and you can go to math box attributes, and say you want to hide the input. There you go, and when you click outside, there it'll look nice and pretty. So that you know, with the text and you know, nice presentable. Let this be there, and perhaps if you want to just add something more like you know, this, and say do not edit below this line, and something like that. Okay. Uh, and then if you want to just change the text of this, uh, attributes of this text so that it stands out, let's say the color, uh, text color is something like red, which stands out. There you go. Now that looks nice and pretty. And now we're ready to group this. Remember, we need to group it. So command four to group it. Uh, both the documents are grouped. And now we're going to go and save it. So doc, file, save as. 
and we're going to save it in the widgets folder. Remember, this is not by default here. By default, it will be somewhere on my documents. So you got to you got to make your way down to my widgets folder. That's the my widgets folder and save it to the sensible name. So what I mean by that is, let's say stationary points. Okay, and then you can say save, and it's saved as a TNS file, but in the widgets folder. It's like a template, right? Now we come out of this and say, I want a new document, and this time you're going to add a widget, not any of the other apps, okay? You're going to add a widget. When you add a widget, you have to choose a widget, okay? So you can choose the widget that you've just created, stationary points, and there it opens up, okay? And first we ungroup it by saying com Command-6 or Control-6, and there you've got your widget. The first thing you got to do when you have a, a Notes app is that you got to activate it, all right? Uh, evaluate it, so what you're going to do is that we're just going to hit Command-A to select everything, go to Menu, Actions, and evaluate okay so that's like evaluating and then you've got all those evaluations done now this is the widget this is like a template here when we have to find for any question that's given in the test or the exercises that you're working on here you can go and make changes so when you make the changes automatically the uh, the widget as you've prepared this was just for the stationary point the x coordinate and the y coordinate the stationary point the uh, the coordinates of um, the y intercept and the x intercept uh, all those things will be updated. So let's go and make those changes. Let's say you wanted uh, this time for uh, polynomial of degree five. All right, degree five polynomial. And let's just make it something like minus, uh, what should we say? Uh, four times X squared, perhaps. Okay, we just updated it. So whatever you are uh, trying to find, uh, whichever function that you're trying to find the coordinates of the stationary point for, you can enter that. And when you hit enter, watch. There you go, automatically it's updated. The coordinates of the state, x coordinates of the stationary point, but remember that's x for, for x equals zero, that's the y value. For x is equal to 1.17, that's the y value, negative 3.28. And also if you want to sketch the graph of the function, guess what, since we added a graph page, if the graph gets updated, now it looks very similar to that one, but trust me, it is uh, updated. It is the graph of x to the power of five minus four x squared. So let's go and change that thing again, maybe, you know, just to see the difference in the graph. So let's say that was, uh, uh, let's make it a fraction index, shall we? Um, what should we say, one over three, and let's see what happens, okay? And there you go, you know, everything is updated here, the x coordinate of the station point again, zero, zero, and that's, uh, or is it 0 0.149 and 0 0.441, and that's the y-intercept there, and there you got the coordinates of the x-intercept, zero and 0 0.435. Let's go and take a look at the graph this time. There you go, can you see the graph? Okay, obviously you can go and, you know, zoom in and check out what the graph is going to look like. So you can go and make a zoom box, Okay, take a look at it there and you can verify the graph. So then you can copy down the graph and make a note of whatever features this widget has to offer you. Now, this is a very basic example of how to use widgets in uh, calculus. You can improve on this widget by including other calculations and other pages to give you many other features of uh, the graph of the function. Uh, this was just a very basic example of how to use widgets in calculus. But if this video was useful to you in any way, please mention that in the comments below. I'm going to see you all in the next video.